Let's praise God this morning. You can stand in this place because we're going to praise God. Glory, hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. God, 
There's no God like Jehovah. 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 He holy comes. He's riding on the cloud. He's shining like the sun. And the trumpet calls to lift your voice. The year of Jubilee. praise this morning in this place. Father God, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, God. God, you are worthy of all of our praise, God, honor and glory, all of our worship this morning. Man, that song gets you kind of winded. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm doing all this bouncing around, and it takes a minute for me to quit shaking up. Gosh, glory, hallelujah. Sometimes my jokes are just right on the edge, y'all. You know, we had a pastor once, when he first took over the church, he would tell these jokes, and me and Christine would sit there and look at him like, he really thinks he's funny. <laughs> you know, but it wasn't funny at all, but you know, weeks down the road, down the line, maybe it was us, I don't know, but he became pretty hilarious. It was like some of the jokes he was telling, I don't know if we met each other in the middle or what, but we was cracking up. Huh? Anyway, I'm going way off. Let's just praise God in this place this morning. <laughs> Hopefully I'll become funny at some point. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Come on now. We've been on our knees. Oh Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our eyes. Give us clean hands. Give us clean hands and give us clean hearts. Let us not, let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees seeks your face oh God oh God let us be God let us be a generation that sees seeks your face oh God of Jacob we bow our hearts we bend our knees we bow our hearts we bend Father, exalting your name, you kept 
captured my heart. Now my life has changed. I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands. Father, I love you. Sing this one more time. We're singing this to Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Because we need Jesus Christ to help us. I know I'm fat fingering the, <laughs> the slides and stuff. <laughs> you can look and laugh. Life is good, amen. And we can laugh in the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's what it's about, amen. Yeah. You know, there's certain aspects to laughter that God has grafted into that. It's a healthy thing to laugh, amen. Yeah. I've been to churches where they're like, yeah. Yeah. you know, real stern and and stuff, and you don't dare laugh while the <laughs> pastor's in the pulpit, you know, yeah. uh -huh. and stuff, and so, you can laugh here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. Yeah. I can take it. You know, we had, a, we, you know, we, we had Ronald, who used to heckle me while I was preaching and stuff. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can heckle me. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Let's go, let's go before God this morning. We want to pray for the leaders of our fellowship. This morning. We always want to lay hold of the leaders of our fellowship because that's where our, our blessing comes from. That's where our direction and guidance comes from. It flows through headship. Amen. If you can't be under authority, you can never be in authority. Mm, yeah. Amen. So we need to pray for our, 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 our headship this morning or this evening. Pastor Mitchell, Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Jonathan Heinberg, Terry Haynes. We need to lay hold of God for them and for their congregations this morning. You know, uh, uh, we, used to say, we used to talk about... Uh, being under, uh, uh, you know, direct, uh, 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 under the, the rule of Prescott, sitting in the Prescott Church, listening to Pastor Mitchell and all them preach. You know what, we do that, because it's all passed down through headship, okay. amen? Yeah. It's all passed down through, I'm not saying that I'm any Greg Mitchell or anything, but hey, what can I say? Glory, man, I'm gonna get a phone call. <laughs> We want to pray for Pastor Day this morning or this evening, amen, and his wife Maureen and for the Albuquerque Church and that God would move mightily there. You know, that's a sending church. I'm, we're praying that hopefully soon it's going to become a, a conference center, which would be wonderful. I'm speaking that into existence, Pastor Day. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. It'd be nice that there'd be a conference center. Pray for my pastor, Pastor Mark Salas his wife Berner for the North Valley congregation there in Albuquerque that God would move mightily there and help them there. He's desperately seeking to send out another church. So we desperately need to become self-supporting, amen. Pray for my son Eric, notice I threw that in there? Pray for my son Eric who's in Stockton, California preaching the gospel, amen. He has this emoji, this head blowing off emoji thing that I've been trying to find and he just told me it's only an app. I hate that. <laughs> anyway, that's that's that that that's a, a, a that's an area of contention <laughs> for me right now because I liked it so much. But pray for my son who's preaching the gospel in Stockton, California. 
He's tearing it up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. He's seen visitors. He's seen people come in. You know, I think it's 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 starting to happen all over. Yes. Amen. You know, I, I, I believe God is preparing us for something. Amen. That we are strategically placed yes. to receive those blessings of, yes. of God. We pray that pray for me and my wife as they, you know, because uh, we desperately need Jesus. We can't do this without God. We can't do this without you. Amen. We really appreciate you. We were talking about that the other day. It was like, we really appreciate you guys, that you guys come out and you guys help us to serve God. And we're going we're gonna to take this city for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on in. Don't just look through the door. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need, you know, we, we need Jesus in this place. He's going to help us. Amen. Pray for Pastor San Diego, Pastor Bales, Pastor Garcia. As we partner with these men and their wives and their congregations that, like I said, take St. Louis for Jesus Christ. And we want this to be a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? A, a, we want to establish a fellowship church here. We have a pretty unique fellowship. Amen. We have a fellowship that's of prayer. Our brother was talking about earlier had how someone left our fellowship and went to another church and he, you know, hadn't been saved very long. But because he prayed before service, he was recognized. People see that going on. This is a unique fellowship that we're a part of. Amen. Amen. We're a praying, preaching fellowship. Amen. Glory to God. So let's pray for these men as well and their congregations. Pray for Pastor Franco. He may have found a building Amen. so he can get started there. Pray for our brothers and sisters across the nation that are preaching the gospel tonight. You know, they're doing the same things that we're doing. They're looking out over their con congregations and they're asking them to pray for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Our missionaries, Ray and Sally, John and Ashley, it's Sally's birthday today. Mm -hmm. Ray and Sally, John and Ashley, Archie and Adele, Jessica uh, and Josh in Ho Chi Minh. We want to pray that God would move there in that place. Glory, hallelujah. Pray for our president who desperately needs Jesus Christ, desperately needs a, some direction and some guidance from our Heavenly Father, amen. Pray for, <coughs> excuse me, let's pray for our troops and our armed forces. Pray for the police and the first responders this evening, amen, because they're in desperate need of prayer. Their families are in desperate need of prayer. Many of them are living in fear right now because of what's going on in this country. So let's pray that God would help them and minister to their families. No one should have to live in fear, amen. No one should have to live afraid. Pray for one another, for backsliders, for our unsaved friends and family the new converts. Let's pray that God would continue to do what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Pray for Dominic this morning. He's got an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you, brother. <laughs> Glory to God. God is good this morning. Like I said, we can laugh and we can play, but you know what? There's a seriousness also in the kingdom of God when we start talking about the things of God like prayer. It's like I preached this morning. It's essential to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's go before God this morning in prayer. And as we subside, my brother, once again, you raise your voice and open us up in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing, for your loving grace and your mercy. Magnify yourself this morning, God, in this place, and help us, God, to live for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we draw near to you tonight, God. And we thank you for the promises of your word, Father God. Give us hearts to hear your word, Father. We ask that uh, we pray for the pastors that are laboring here in Missouri, God, that you give them buildings, Father, that you give them growth, God, that you give them wisdom, Father God. We thank you even now for the revival that's coming, God. Prepare us for that, Lord. We thank you in advance. We praise you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. One more thing. I, I forgot to. Let's pray for Vince Corpus, uh, Jose Canas. Canas? Can you know who it is. I usually get it right. Let's pray for him. God knows who that is. Pray for April Diaz that, you know, she's got a, a, a pain from her accident. Uh, we need to pray the surgery for Kanyas. And we know Vince Corpus needs Jesus Christ this morning. Let's pray one more time. Father God, we thank you for these, God. Magnify yourself. We didn't have much of I had a prayer because I was down on ground and a little baby got hit by this uh, 25 ton. Man, I was out there with white ones. And the young lady just hit the baby, it was on her, you know what I mean. And they said that the baby was breathing but unresponsive. And she just drove off on the scene. So 
Pray for the child. Let's pray for this child right now. God, we praise you and worship you, God. You know the situation there, God. Magnify your efforts, God. Bring to a place, my God, of obedience and repentance for the one who drove away. God, we pray for the life of this child, that you would magnify your efforts in that place for your glory, my God, that you would move there. Bring healing into our sister this morning, God. Bring healing, my God. I pray, God, for the surgery, Lord God, for Jose this morning, God, that you would move there, God. We pray for Vince in this place, God, that you would touch his body, God, to touch his heart and his mind, that you would help him there. In Jesus' glorious name, once again, we pray. Let's give him praise. Father God, we praise you, God, we worship you, God. Magnify yourself in this place tonight, my God, by your power, by your grace, God, you are worthy. Glory, hallelujah. Whew. <laughs> Boy, folks, just they been waiting for me to do something. That's what I'm talking about. God is good this evening. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You have a need on your heart, I guess. You need it. <laughs> I got one more. I, I don't know what's happening. What's up, brother? Um, I want God to touch my real father's heart to reconnect with me. And uh, like I said, I've never seen him. When I was younger, as a baby, he left. Whatever reason that is, still don't know. But it's a big part of who I am missing as a man that I didn't get. I didn't get to do the whole, you know, whole baseball manly thing or learn whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, so far, I get texts on Facebook wise. He never responded. And I was hoping God will okay. mend that. So, uh, needs, so you know what you need to do is put him on your prayer request, and we'll do that all the time. We'll pray for him right now. I don't mind praying for him. once. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we have to uh, uh, contend for God to move. Father God, we pray for Leland's father, God, that you would help him, God, pave the way, Lord, that he can, he would touch his heart in his life, that they can reconnect, reestablish relationship there, God. Father, magnify yourself this morning, God, in his heart and in his life. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. But yeah, if you put him on the prayer list, brother, I'll remember to pray for him. Because you, don't forget, I'm old. What's, what's his I name? Forget, so I can remember. Flanolin Urban. You know, and put him on the floor. <laughs> Amen. Flanolin. Flanolin. We're going to have to write that down, brother. Flanolin. 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 Glory, hallelujah. We're going to pray for Flanolin. 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 Oh no, let's go ahead and say hi. What is going on with me? I see how it is. Hello. I see how it is. I don't know if it's got an attitude. Hello. Glory, hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and pray for one another. I don't know what's going on with me. Afternoon. But I seem to be. Hello. I seem to be messing up. Glory, hallelujah. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. God bless you, sis. Hey, she's got grit. That's what I'm talking about. That's your duty. Oh, God bless you. Glory, Oh, you know what? I was supposed to announce that uh, you know, since, we're, since we're, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to grow, we're starting to get folks in. You know, if you prefer to wear a mask like my brother over there or something like that, you know what? You might want to do that just to keep other people from getting uncomfortable. You know, the shaking hands and all that stuff. Some people oh, yeah. are uncomfortable with that. So, you know, as we as we grow, let's be aware of those things. I don't mind. I'll shake anybody's hand, you know. As long as you're not sitting there licking your hand before we <laughs> shake, we're all good. <laughs> We've got hand sanitizer in the back. We've got a nurse here. If, if you got a temperature, she can give you aspirin and it won't be trafficking. <laughs> we, we've got things covered. Again, if you feel like you need to be socially distanced, you go right ahead and you take care of that. Because we don't want anybody feeling uncomfortable in the house of God. Amen. You know what I mean? And I, I noticed my brother out there, he's constantly using that hand sanitizer. Man, that's expensive, man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I should have never even said that this morning. You out there, you come to church. I don't mind you using the hand sanitizer. I, I, I lick my hands. <laughs> Again, he pays his tithes. He's allowed. Oh, hallelujah. What's some of the things we say on this pulpit? You know, I'm going to get a phone call. <laughs> we want to have a couple of announcements this evening. We want, to, we want to let you know we have Sunday morning services at 1030. It's not the same services we have in the evening. 
I know some churches do that. They have three services, but it's all the same sermon. Sometimes I envy those guys. But we preach a different sermon every, every service. And then at 6 o'clock in the evening, you know that because you're here. We have Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. Friday, every first and third Friday of the month, we've got Bible study. So we have a Bible study this Friday. So you be here. We're going to be in Romans chapter 14. Enchiladas are coming. Glory to God. You see how my Spanish comes out when I start talking about Mexican food? My enchiladas. Glory, hallelujah. Saturday, we have a big outreach in Winsville. If you want to go with, go with us there. Amen. Come on. Because we're going to be going out there. I think he's going to have us there by noon. I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but it's probably going to be an all-day thing because he's got people coming from everywhere. Come on. Amen. Kentucky and yeah. Pittsburgh and <laughs> Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh. North Pole. Pittsburgh, Kansas. Everybody's like, Dang! <laughs> Probably. He hasn't given me all the itinerary and all that stuff. I know there's probably going to be food, though I'm going to be there. <laughs> so you make sure that you come okay. through. Oh, yeah, if I'm going to get the call, I might as well go all out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Glory, hallelujah. You be faithful to the things of God. And Sit down, Christian. Saturday, amen. Because God loves us to be out there telling people about Him, amen. Amen, come on. Glory to God. I don't even know where we're at anymore now. <laughs> Cash at, Pastor. We're at church. <laughs> Chat out. It's fun to serve God. That's what I'm talking about. See, he's got an attitude, man. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. I got a testimony involving the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ. Okay, that's going to have to wait, brother. Let's take care of this business. <laughs> Let's Amen. take care of this business. Amen. What's that, it's that, it's that time of the service, amen, where we have to, uh, not have to, excuse me, where we get to give them to the Yes, community. amen. We get to partner with Jesus Christ. How good do we have it, amen? Amen. That we get to partner with Jesus Christ in our giving. You know, it's a measure of our heart this morning. I'll probably say that every service. It's a measure of our heart this morning for God. Because people tell me all the time, I love God. But they don't give. They refuse to give it to the kingdom of God. And I know some people can't give. Some people just don't have the, the funds or the ends to give, you know, no job or what have you. But you know what? If you start out small, God will increase you. Because it's about the trust that you have in Can him. We talked about the widow's might and how little she gave. And she has spoken about the word. The Bible says wherever the word has been preached, she has spoken about because of what she gave. Christ even called himself, hey, yo, you guys, come over here and look at what she has Christian. done. Amen. Because it's Sit that down. important this morning that we give. <clears throat> it's a biblical principle this morning, giving. So you be faithful in the things of God, because I know he's faithful to deal with your heart about giving. You know, and a lot of us, we just kind of want to shut that off. And, well, no, that's the devil that's telling me to give. The devil's not going to tell you to give to the kingdom of God. That's right. You know, he might tell you to give to the bar. We had no problem doing that. I told you to give to the, the dope man down the street, and we had no problem giving to that. We should not have a problem giving unto Jesus Christ. Amen. So you got to be faithful in your giving of your tithes and your offering unto God. Glory, hallelujah. Cash out. Almost went over. But if you're at, home, you're at home and you want to give unto the kingdom of God because God is dealing with your heart this evening, we are, we are accepting gifts online, amen. And, and what you have to do is you've got to download the Cash app. It's a safe app to have on your phone. But you download the Cash app and you punch in our cash tag, which is a, 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 the money symbol, STL Potter's House. You hit that button there, and and and, and we should pop up. I, I think either does my name pop up or does the church pop up? No, just the cash tag. Okay, the church pops up. Mm -hmm. So you go ahead and you give, you give to the church. God will help you. Amen. Pray for the offering, Lord. <clears throat> Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the opportunity to give for your giving, God. Father, I pray our response would not be uh, religious, Lord, but it would be out of gratefulness and thankfulness, God. We ask you that you bless this offering and that you multiply for your kingdom, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Can you believe This evening, 
Go ahead, brother. Fire away. Oh, yeah. uh, I was going to wait, but... Well, no, um, that's what we were waiting for, just to get, take care of this. Okay, um, so I was in my room, and I felt this enormous power of God. So I immediately dropped to my knees, and I'm like, Lord, okay, I, I understand now. So I prayed, and I'm like, Lord, I surrendered to the Holy Spirit. I just had all of my body and soul. And I'm different. Uh... You know, and he said, thank you. Now you're born again. And what had set that up was, uh, there was the book with the fist on it. I came in there, I grabbed one, two of those, and I read it. And it set the stage for me to just feel the anointing of God when I was done. Because I realized I've always recited it, but I never said it for me to hear his words. Mm -hmm. it, confess with your mouth, come on, heart. Yes. So and so. Amen. Amen. And actually, Amen. Praise, God. Praise, God. praise God. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Making advancements in the kingdom of God. Amen. If you have your Bibles this afternoon, amen, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 through 9. This is another basic sermon this morning. I know we have some seasoned saints in this place, but I, trust me, I believe God can feed us all through whatever we preach if we're preaching the truth. Amen. We were talking about, I'm going to talk about hope this evening, you and I. So this week we had a death in the family, uh, the family meaning those, the body of Christ here. We had a, someone that we all dearly loved or at least were attached to. Uh, uh, they found his body this Monday. I talked about that on Wednesday. Amen. And it made us take stock this evening in two things in our lives, our morality and, and our relationship with Jesus Christ. At least it did for me. Let me take stock in those things in the condition of my heart. You see, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Amen. So I want to talk this evening about the hope we have in Christ Jesus. The assurance that we have in God this evening. Amen. Because we have that. We have that. Amen. Amen. But we have, to, we have to choose that. We have to choose God. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says this. It says, There shall not, not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee, but strong and of, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give unto them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that they, might, that they mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your guidance and your protection, your provision. Magnify yourself this evening in this service, God, and help us to understand your divine direction and the hope that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Hold on one second. See, in this particular portion of Scripture this evening, amen, it is spoken unto Joshua a promise of God's guidance and his direction, of his protection. It's a hope that he's given to Joshua of an, of an expected end, uh, uh, one of the Scriptures says. See, I, I'm, it's a reminder of the covenant that he had with Abraham, a reminder of the covenant with Jacob. See, God is, God is giving Joshua a hope of success and assurance of victory. And that's what we all want, right? We want, to, we want to have success. We want to prosper. We want to have victory. See, God has promised that for you and I as well. Deuteronomy 31 8 says, And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with you. He will not fail you, neither forsake you. Fear not, neither be dismayed. One man said this. He said, The completion of of conviction and confidence expressed in the life of the believer, worked in us by the Holy Spirit, derives from a reliance upon God and His promises alone, and results in a boldness and a steadfastness in the service and in this 
in the face of difficulties. We can have victories in the face of difficulties. We can have understanding this evening in the face of difficulties. We have hope this evening in the face of difficulties. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Just because we have difficulties, because we have trials and tribulations, because we have troubles and issues and circumstances and situations, don't mean we have to lose hope. Amen. We have promises. We have the guidance of the Holy Ghost. So I'm gonna talk real quickly this evening about our assurance and our hope that we have in God. Joshua 1 5 says, There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I will not fail you nor forsake you. I remember when I was a kid, I had a cousin of mine. I was growing up in Oakland, and I had a cousin of mine who had his bicycle stolen. Now, this is family, you know, and, and so me and my friends, you know, it was one of those friends for life kind of situations, you know what I mean? No matter what kind of situations, you know how that works, right? So he had his bike stolen, and so we're walking around the neighborhood, and we're looking for a bike, and we go to the Toys R Us, and there's his bike sitting in front of the Toys R Us along with a couple of other bikes, you know, so he grabs his bike and stuff and he starts to pull it out of the rack and the guys who stole his bike come running out of the thing. They're from another neighborhood, they're from Brookfield. We know these guys, a little bit older than we are, you know. So there my cousin is, he's trying to run with his bike and trying to get on his bike and, there, and we've got these four or five guys that are chasing us. You know, we all split up and went in different directions. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to have each other's back Man, it just did not work out that way, amen. See, God says he's not going to fail us. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us pushing the bike while, <laughs> while the enemy is trying to pound on our heads, amen. Proverbs twenty three seventeen says this. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there's an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. God says, we haven't expected it. We were just talking about victory and assurance. He says, we can achieve those things if we stick with him. He's not going to run in a different direction, amen? So the grass, beloved, this morning is not always greener on the other side. We want to think that it is. I mean, we look over there and we see nice plush grass. And it's like, wow, that's nice. Guy sunning himself in the yard. Yeah, that's, that's nice. But you know what? It's the same on our side. You see, we're, we get delusional sometimes. So it might look that way, and it might feel that way. We get delusional about where we are sometimes. Three years ago, one of my favorite movies, I, I, I might even say one of my all-time favorite movies, is a movie by the name of Cinderella Man. Anybody seen that movie, Cinderella Man? It's not a girly movie, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> it's about James J. Braddock, champion of the world. It was a man who was a, was a boxer and he had lost his career. He was getting beat up like every fight because he didn't have a left hand. And he came upon hard times and he had his, this man is, I don't know if he's the only boxer to have his license taken away because he couldn't defend himself, but they revoked his license. That's how bad this man had gotten in his boxing career. And it was during the, the uh, depression, so he didn't have any, any ways of, 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 of supporting his family. And he was hurting, I know men in here, you know, if I can't support my family, I'm a hurting dude, amen? So he's hurting, he can't support his family, and he gets an opportunity to fight, uh, fight one of the number two ranked contenders. Just a show fight, because the guy backed out of the fight, but he doesn't have no license or anything, right? So his manager comes up, hands him 75 bucks, and says, maybe just take this one fight, it's just one fight, it's a couple of dollars, you can buy some milk. So, of course his wife is angry, you know, it's like, dude, uh, you, you know, you're coming from this affluent place and you, you want to put my, my husband in the ring once again and get that all started all over again. You know, you know how hard it was for me to get him away from that? It broke his heart that the boxing commission took away his license. So she takes a bus and she takes a train and she goes all the way down there to the rich part of town where, her man, where his manager lives. And she walks into the building and this is a high rise building and the, the uh, 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 lobby looks all plush and pristine and pretty and she gets on the elevator with a doorman, you know, the whole scene. And she gets to the door and she's about to knock on the door and the camera angle changes from inside of the apartment. 
and you see the manager hiding behind the door because he hears her knocking on the door and he's looking through the peephole. And then the camera fades back and you see that all this man has in that house is a card table, you know those old card tables your parents used to have, and two chairs and his wife is sitting down and they're eating crackers. Sometimes we get delusional about what's on the other side of that fence. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we don't get to see what's on the other side of that fence. Some people say, if you walk a mile in my shoes, I don't have to because my shoes are bad enough. <laughs> Amen. They took away his license, and she thought for sure they were using her husband. But you know what? James Brad ended up turning his life around. He became the heavyweight champion of the world. That's an incredible story. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. See, life happens to us all, beloved, and sometimes it seems like there's just no hope for us. It's like, God, there's dry seasons in my life. I'm in the wilderness. And then we're looking towards the garden and we're saying, why can't I be there? You can be there. Just trust in God. Amen. Things change. We can trust God. There's hope this evening is all I'm trying to say. If we endure until the end, the Bible says we'll make heaven our home. No matter what you've been going through, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what trials and tribulations and troubles, those things will pass. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ. That includes enduring until the end. We don't have to get to a point where we have no hope this evening. Amen? God wants to help us. First Peter chapter 5 Verse 8 through 10, the Bible says this. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are, accustomed, are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the grace of God, excuse me, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish and strengthen you, and settle you. What? What? He's saying that after we suffer for him, after we go through our trials and our tribulations, if we can endure until the end, it says he's going he's gonna to help us. He's going to preserve us. He's going to establish us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to settle us. He's going to give us an expected end, that victory and that prosperity that we seek. So many of us step out of the will of God before we've gotten that blessing from heaven, amen? That blessing from Jesus Christ. Psalms 37, 28 says, For the Lord, he loveth judgment, and he forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. It doesn't matter what we go through here in the earth, amen? If we can endure unto the end, which we can because Christ says that we can, we can make heaven our home. The blessings will be overwhelming. He says, "Do you know what? You know." He says, "All that you've given up for me—houses, uh, 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 brothers, sisters, mothers, aunts, uncles—all that you've given up for me, I'll give back to you tenfold. Amen. Tenfold, amen. Yeah. My wife and I—we moved here from Albuquerque, New Mexico. My sons, my daughters, my grandchildren—they're all thousands of miles away from us. But you know what? We've got brothers. We've got sisters. Amen. We've got grandchildren." <laughs> Amen. Because God is faithful. Yes. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. And we can't outgive God. That's right. You know, all the stuff that we're giving. He even gave us Dominic. What an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Secondly, this evening, I want to talk about our, our insurance and our hope and what it's based on. And it's based this evening, amen, on our knowledge of God. See, I read an article. I talked about this earlier this week. I, I believe Wednesday or late Sunday. I read an article about the atheists who's arguing against the existence of God. I don't know if you remember me talking about that. You know, and, and, and I said there's one thing that, that that atheist can never reconcile, and that's our personal experience of Jesus Christ. It just burns their noggin when they try and explain away our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One man said this. He said, the assurance of believers is based upon the certain knowledge of God that's revealed in creation. And in his mighty acts throughout history, upon the certainty of his promises and the vindication and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the inward testimony, the outward power of the Holy Ghost. 
You can't argue with that. I wish he would have talked to this guy, that atheist. There might have been a different uh, end there, amen? God has revealed unto us in his creation. Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day they pour out speech. Night after night they communicate knowledge. It says there is no speech, there are no words, There's the voice is not heard. I was talking again the other day about the, a story I read about the polygraph technician. Who's, who hooked his body ground. I don't know, what was this guy thinking? Why would, you know, why would you even do that? Shocking a plant or whatever you're doing. But he hooked his polygraph up to a plant. And he began to speak to this plant and ask this plant questions. And the needle was, you know, it was bouncing. It was giving, giving off vibrations. It was, it was giving valleys and, and peaks. And he thought it was just a random thing until he started asking specific questions, even trying to mix it up and trying to confuse the situation. And he was getting the same answers from the plant. It's incredible stuff. Huh? I, I read a little further, and I got into the science of it all. And, and, they're, and they're saying the sign that the plants do indeed communicate communicates through, through a smell, of course, but vibrations and even sound. If you play a plant music, it seems to grow better. If you play Dominic music, he seems to fare a little better, amen. <laughs> See, we knew that plants communicated, amen. I, I, I didn't realize that it was that kind of uh, uh, you know, intensity that happens there. But in Psalms 19, the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour out speech. Amen. Creation pours out speech day after day. Amen. Glory to God. Night after night, they communicate knowledge. And the Bible says we have no excuse because of what we have in our surroundings. And then we're talking about Ray Comfort. There's a design, there's a designer. The Bible says our assurance and our hope is based upon our knowledge of God. See, we have a knowledge of God given to us through a thing of creation, a hope in the things of God, a hope this evening in the rest of the story, his story, a hope in the vindication through Christ, his crucifixion and his resurrection. He died on the cross and shed his blood for you and me. We wouldn't even take a beat down from my cousin, let alone shed a blood. First Peter chapter one says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, our assurance this morning not only comes from our knowledge of God, but our assurance and our hope comes from the work of the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 16 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. See, it is the Spirit this evening that brings the conviction of the Holy Ghost, that brings the conviction to the unbeliever as well as to the believer this evening, causes us to see the truth, causes us to see gospel in a clear light. Amen. Because we have an enemy that tries to cloud things, that tries to keep us from seeing the truth. But it's the Spirit this evening, it's the Holy Ghost that, that makes himself equal with God. He guides us and leads us and instructs us, teaches us, comforts us, intercedes for us, intervenes for us. And the scriptures this evening, they attest to the deity of the Holy Spirit. I've had that discussion, y'all and all, not the Holy Spirit. 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, the scripture said. Amen. You know what, let me clear up something. We know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This isn't in my notes. But because of a conversation, I, I feel like I need to mention this. But we know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But he's also God. Amen? Yeah. Let me prove that to you this evening. It's like, man, how do you prove that? Yeah, I understand. Now, the Bible says that the begotten is of its own kind. Amen? So that means a dog gives birth to a dog, a cat gives birth to a cat, a cow gives birth to a cow. But see, those dogs, they're canine. There might be one, two, three dogs there, but they're canine. They've been, given, they've been birthed or begotten as of their own kind. They're canine. So if canine begets canine, right? If, if uh, 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 Gato begets Gato, then God begets God. 
Feel me? So although he's man, because we know man begets man, man doesn't beget horse or dog. He begets another man. So God also begets God. Does that make sense? Does that explain that situation? Because I've had this conversation and it's like, well, you know, Jesus is the son of God. He's not God. God begets God. Glory to God. Amen? Nobody's throwing any things? Am I going to get a phone call? (laughs) I, I don't believe I'm preaching heresy this evening. See, our hope and our assurance Back to our st- <laughs> Dominic, you have something to say? <laughs> where, 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 where. Our hope and our assurance, assurance this evening is in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's in his omniscience and his omnipotence, in his power and his all knowing. Our hope is firmly embedded in the ability of Jesus Christ and the ability of God this evening. Amen. See, the delusion of our assurance and, 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 and the illusion of hope this evening is a very strong possibility this evening because we see it all around us all the time. Remember, well, 1 John 2, 9 says, He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. How many Christians out there do we know that hate? Yeah. How many Christians are, are out there in the, in the picket lines that are hating? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with protesting because there isn't. We have a right to do that. But we don't have a right to hate. Amen. We don't have a right to throw bottles and cans and loot and break things up. Let me get back to the sermon. It says, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, and knowing not whether he go, Because that darkness has blinded his eyes. We have Christians that that are living like that today. That are living in hate. They say they love God and yet they hate their brother. Can I tell you they're delusional in this place. There's not just an illusion. They're delusional. They say the delusion of assurance this evening. The Bible says if you don't love your brother, you can't possibly love God. If you don't love your brother, you can't possibly love God. Remember the, the Pharisee and the tax collector? That parable always bugged me. You know, that, that parable always bugged me. The Pharisee is under the illusion that he's okay. You know, he's better than the guy that's, that's down there with his face on the ground, you know, seeking forgiveness from God. He was delusional about the condition that his heart was in. Luke 18, verse 9. It's a lengthy portion of the scripture, but I'm going to read it to you. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. See, that's, that's key right there. He spake this parable unto the, the certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to, into the temple to pray. The one was a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, th- I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. See, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Amen. We're no better than anyone else. We're saved and we're living for God and we love Jesus Christ. But we're not any better than anyone else. But what's the first thing a sinner says to us when we begin to witness to him? Oh, you think you're better than me. That's an illusion. That's an illusion. See, we don't think we're better than anyone. We have no confidence in the flesh this evening. Amen. See, the flesh this evening can be deceiving. Or can be can deceive. It can deceive us into thinking that everything's all right, everything's okay, I'm good. I had a friend of mine, I'm golden, he used to say, golden. (laughs) He was all jacked up. (laughs) It's only all good this morning when we're about our Father's business. It's only all good this evening when we're we're about our Father's business. Matthew 17, when I'm closing with this, I understand that that it's it's hot in here and and we're tired and I want to eat. But Matthew 
chapter 7, 21 says this. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, so I'm telling you that now. Depart from me, ye who work iniquity. See, our ability to have hope this morning or this evening is to be assured in the things of God, not in ourselves. And it's given to us directly by God. Glory, hallelujah. I finish with this. It says, there, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of my life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for unto, unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou may prosper whithersoever thou go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage, to be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. Let's have every head bowed. That's all I got this evening. Amen. Glory to God. God is with us wherever we go. Yes. God loves us, and he shed his blood on the cross for us so that we would have this opportunity that we have right now my brother gave a wonderful praise report of his uh, uh, laying hold of God for his life. Amen. That's a good thing. That's what we want to do here in this place tonight. Amen. You're at home. You're online. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's very easy to do that. The minute you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your personal Lord and Savior, you begin a relationship with him. You become born again. It gives you a new heart, new eyes to see, new mind to understand. God wants to help you in this place this evening. I want to ask you to you know, stay. These all stand. These altars are open in this place tonight. And I'm going to pray a prayer with those that are at home that are looking towards Je for Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. You can stand in this place, Amen. I know you got an attitude, Tom. <laughs> Glory, Hallelujah. These altars are open for you to pray and lay hold of God because it's important that we're constantly in prayer, amen? You at home, you wanna, you wanna accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat this after me. Father God, have mercy on my soul. I've sinned against you and you only. Come into my heart, govern my life, be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died for my sins, that you shed blood for my salvation. I thank you for your plan of redemption and restoration. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. If you said that prayer this evening, amen, contact us, beloved. Uh, uh, I, I think my, um, what is it, Facebook or YouTube or address or something. Email. On the screen. Your email. My email is there on the screen. You email me. And you your know, number too. So two. I can get in touch with you and we can, we can, I can help you to serve God. I just want to love you. Put on you on, a, on a, 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 a prayer list so we can pray for you and all that stuff. And uh, uh, my brother's giving me some kind of signal, but I can't read so it. Send your, your text to your number so they can text. Oh, oh, my number's on there as well. Is that what you're telling me? My number's on the text. You go ahead and give me a call. I will answer my phone most times. <laughs> God wants to help you, and I want to be a part of that. Amen. Allow me to do so.
Father God, we thank you this evening for your love and grace and your mercy, God. And for these that have been added unto the kingdom, we thank yes, you Lord. for all that you're doing. God, continue, Heavenly Father God, to pour out your spirit, to pour out hope and the assurance of, of our salvation. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. It's kind of a ragtag sermon, but I think it worked, yeah.